This is a spectacular footage of Ukrainian troops in Humvees mine buildings occupied by Russian troops in Krasnohorivka. Also, you can see how a satchel charge detonates. Russian military blogger Romanov confirms that the Ukrainian forces expanded the bridgehead in Krinky 500 meter to the west. While this information is not that new, Romanov reveals Russians just left this position without a fight. He also claims Russians made a small advance in the center of Krinky. It's really incredible that Russians can't dislodge Ukrainians from Krinky after several months of relentless attacks and Ukrainians being surrounded from all sides. True heroism. Russia is considering a return to producing low-quality gasoline to make up for shortages caused by Ukrainian attacks on its oil refineries. However, this is likely to cause damage to vehicles, which owners may find difficult to repair due to a shortage of spare parts. Reuters and the Russian newspaper Kommersant report that the Russian government is considering temporarily suspending fuel environmental standards to enable gasoline to be produced at a lower quality or to include environmentally damaging octane boosting additives. Since 2016, Russia has only allowed the production of at least Euro 5 standard gasoline, a standard set by the European Union which is also in effect in a number of non-EU, Asian and South American countries. Modern vehicles are designed to run only on compliant fuel. Most of Russia's oil refineries were built in the 1940s and 1970s, and a number were modernized in the 2000s, increasing Russia's gasoline output and quality. However, the Ukrainian campaign appears to have disrupted several of the most modern refineries. According to Reuters, the Ukrainian attacks have reduced Russian gasoline output by an estimated 14%. In response, the Russian government is reportedly exploring options to roll back fuel standards to enable outdated but intact refineries to make up the shortfall. Russia is reportedly considering increasing the amount of octane in its gasoline by adding tolwane and the environmentally damaging monomethylaniline, which was banned in 2016. However, as experts have noted to the Russian outlet agency News, this would have highly damaging effects on vehicles. John Heitzier of Russia's National Automobile Union says that low-quality gasoline will seriously reduce the service life of engines, especially diesels. When one of the experts say that we have few cars with Euro 6 fuel, he is deeply mistaken. We have a lot with Euro 5 and quite a few with Euro 6. Well, we probably have nowhere to go, we'll have to drive. But we will have to prepare for not the most pleasant times. A Skoda repair specialist says that, most likely, there will be problems with burnout of pistons, valves, and other elements. The fuel will burn poorly, continue to burn in the exhaust manifold, and the temperature there will be significantly higher than it should be. All catalyzers may burn out, causing the Lambda probe to read incorrect readings that will go to the engine control unit, and then it goes in a circle. Errors, unstable functioning, and so on. The Skoda specialist suggested that the situation might end up being like that in Uzbekistan, where the antiquated Soviet-era Normal 80 low-octane fuel is still widely used. They use gasoline like our old 80. On modern engines, especially in Skoda Kodiak, cars' pistons burn out in almost every second car with a mileage of 40,000 kilometers or more. Replacing damaged components is likely to be more difficult and expensive due to the effect of sanctions, particularly for Western-made vehicles. Commerçant suggests that the proposals are unlikely to be accepted due to the amount of harm they could cause.
and here is Gerasimov, which said that Russian troops will use the experience they gained during their special military operation in Ukraine to prepare CSTO troops. Ukraine is just a warm-up for the Russian war machine. Every next war will get worse. Определили направление дальнейшей работы по развитию коллективных авиационных сил ОДКБ и организации противовоздушной обороны в Центральноазиатском регионе коллективной безопасности. Кроме того, на заседании представлены современные подходы к организации применения беспилотных летательных аппаратов и противодействия им средствами радиоэлектронной борьбы на основе опыта, полученного в ходе специальной военной операции на Украине. Договорились внедрять передовой опыт ведения боевых действий в практику подготовки войск коллективных сил ОДКБ. And allegedly, Russians are forming underground movement in Odessa. Мы намерены очистить наш славный город-герой от фашистских собак. Я также обращаюсь к солдатам украинской армии. Если вы считаете себя настоящими потомками народа-победителя, вступайте в наши ряды, помогайте нам защитить мирное население. Residents of a village near Orenburg in Russia independently built a dam 1.5 kilometers long to protect against flooding without any participation from the authorities. It turned out that it only required about $6,000 in materials and equipment. Meanwhile, the dam in the flooded Orsk cost the administration around $9 million, although it was much longer, 12 kilometers and higher. However, it failed to fulfill its function. Putin should be pleased. While he is busy killing, Russian citizens are perfectly solving their problems themselves. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe. Also, if you want to support Warthog Defense, please become our member and get early access to new videos, exclusive members only videos, and become administrator in comment section. The membership link is in the description. Rescues. Every day we had a guy last week at six rescues in six days. You know, he's doing the job every day.